sharing a poem today by the Washington, D.C. legend, Myra Sclaru. And I'm, as I'm sitting here, I'm letting people into the waiting room. So this poem is Poem of the Mother by Myra Sclaru. Poem of the Mother. The heart goes out ahead, scouting for him, while I stay at home, keeping the fire, holding the house down around myself like a skirt from the high wind. The boy doesn't know how my eye strains to make out his small animal shape, swimming hard across the future, nor that I have strengthened myself like the wood side of the house for his benefit. I stay still so he can rail against me. I stay at the fixed center of things, like a jar on its shelf or the clock on the mantel, so when the time comes, he can leave me. One more time. Poem of the Mother. The heart goes out ahead, scouting for him, while I stay at home keeping the fire, holding the house down around myself like a skirt from the high wind. The boy doesn't know how my eye strains to make out his small animal shape, swimming hard across the future, nor that I have strengthened myself like the wood side of this house for his benefit. I stay still so he can rail against me. I stay at the fixed center of things like a jar on its shelf or the clock on the mantel, so when his time comes, he can leave me. Once again, that's Myra Sclaru. And we'll sit for uh, about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna try to come back and do justice to this marvelous piece of writing. So let's just take a comfortable seat. Straighten the back, feet flat on the floor, floor. knees at a right angle, not tucked under the chair. you find your way in, just let your shoulders drop. Eyes closed if you feel comfortable doing that or half open. muscles of the face, just relaxing. The breath go deeper now. 
count to four. On the in breath and five on the out breath. or whatever the equivalent is of a deeper breath for you. If you find yourself wandering, just come back and the coming back is the whole point. Relax the muscles of the face, relax the shoulders. If you have pain in your shoulder, breathe the pain right into it. Breathe, breathe, breathe right into the pain. to try a little Tonglen practice today. Tonglen is a practice of breath work where you take in suffering on the in-breath and on the out-breath, you send out compassion. So on the in-breath, if there's any part of you that's hurting, Breathe it in. And on the out breath, just send compassion to that place or that state of mind.
And if there's someone else in your life who is hurting and you can't do anything about it, but just witness it, this practice for me is very helpful. Home of the Mother by Myra Sclerou. The heart goes out ahead, scouting for him, while I stay at home keeping the fire, holding the house down around myself like a skirt from the high wind. The house doesn't know how my eye strains to make out his small animal shape swimming hard across the future, nor that I have strengthened myself like the wood side of this house for his benefit. I stay still so he can rail against me. I stay at the fixed center of things, like a jar on its shelf or the clock on the mantle, so when the time comes, he can leave me. This is a poem about an expression of love for which there's a name in, in Buddhist practice. The, the term is equanimity. It's, a, it's one of the, the four houses of love in, in Buddhism. Equanimity is loving somebody by giving them the freedom to have their struggle. It's loving somebody by letting them go. And last week we talked about the hinge between sorrow and wonder in Miwosh's encounter poem. And this is really about the hinge between compassion and wisdom, where the heart goes out ahead scouting for him is an act of compassion. I stay at home keeping the fire, holding the house down around myself like a skirt from the high wind, is wisdom. It's the doing nothing. It's the standing firm at the center, like Myra says in the, in the poem. So immediately at the beginning of the poem, you have this persona that is split into two. One is the heart that wants to go out and help. And the other is the, the self with a capital S that knows that the best way to help is to let go and to stay firm at the center of things. I love that she uses the holding the house down around myself like a skirt from the high wind. That's one of the, the great central images in this poem. She uses uh, the image of a skirt, which is a, 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 an image of the feminine, but this skirt is made out of brick and mortar and wood and, and hearth. Uh, so there's a, an incredible strength around this holding a skirt down from the high wind. 
The other thing I love about the poem is that the boy doesn't know that any of this is happening. This this is this is a, a, an almost completely selfless kind of expression of love because the recipient of it doesn't even know that it's happening. The boy doesn't know how my eye strains to make out his small animal shape. And the struggle here is to just witness this, this effort on the rim of the future without getting involved. Nor that I have strengthened myself like the wood side of this house for his benefit. But the, the, the magic of the poem for me happens right here at the end where she writes, I stay still so he can rail against me. Winnicott talks about the good enough mother and it seems like that's what's being evoked here, that the good enough mother is the one who simply stands firm while the child rails against her uh, or the good enough parent, I would say. The child rails against them. Why? Because they want to know that the parent will still be there even when they're acting out or even when they fail them and fail them and fail them. So her act of love in this poem is, I stay still so he can rail against me. I stay at the fixed center of things, like a jar on its shelf or the clock on the mantel. So when his time comes, he can leave me. And I think at that moment in the poem, the poem becomes about so many other things. It's the poem of the mother, but it's also the poem of the poem because that's what poems do. They stay fixed at the center of things like a jar. They create a container and inside the container is all this fire and volatility pushing out at the edges. But if it weren't for the container, the fire would disperse and we wouldn't have anything to look at or to think about. So the poem holds it all. And poem also is made of time. Language is time because you have to read it from the beginning to the end of the sentence. It's like the clock on the mantel keeping a measured pace. So when his time comes, he can leave me. And I guess the last thing I was thinking about with this poem is that it's a poem about memory, because even if that person is no longer here and we're thinking about their pain or their struggle or their suffering, and in our grief, we can't let it go, we're holding them for a period and then releasing them, or maybe we're release releasing them when we ourselves have to go. But there is an open door at the end, uh, like at the end of life or like at the end of a really good poem. So one more time, poem of the mother. The heart goes out ahead, scouting for him, while I stay at home, keeping the fire, holding the house down around myself, like a skirt from the high wind. The boy doesn't know how my eye strains to make out his small animal shape, swimming hard across the future, nor that I've strengthened myself like the wood side of this house for his benefit. I stay still so he can rail against me. I stay at the fixed center of things, like a jar on its shelf or the clock on the mantel. So when his time comes, he can leave me. Let's go back in for another 10 minutes. I have a little question to lead the second part of the meditation. Bring those feet flat on the floor again and your hands on your lap. Eyes closed. Softening the muscles of the face.
breathing into whatever pain is in your body or on your mind. There's a teacher called Michael Singer who, who just basically boils everything down to relax and release. Just letting things pass through you, not holding on. That's equanimity. The question is, who or what is struggling out there on the rim of the future for you? And how can you love them best by letting them have their experience? You just be that house, that hearth. They can rail against. Duffy, one more time. Who or what is struggling out there on the rim of the future? And how can you love them best by letting them have their experience? Now for the last three minutes or so, we'll go back to the Tonglen practice. Tonglen is spelled T-O-N-G-L-E-N. Pema Chodron talks about Tonglen a lot. Breathing in. Hear the house, hear the hearth.
and breathing out your the heart out there on the rim. of the mother. The heart goes out ahead, scouting for him while I stay at home, keeping the fire, holding the house down around myself like a skirt from the high wind. The boy doesn't know how my eye strains to make out his small animal shape, swimming hard across the future nor that I've strengthened myself like the wood side of this house for his benefit. I stay still so he can rail against me. I stay at the fixed center of things like a jar on its shelf or the clock on the mantle. So when the time comes, he can leave me. That's Myris Glaru. And her most recent book is called A Survivor Called Trauma. And it's about memory in the Holocaust in Lithuania. Highly recommended. She's the author of 13 books. Uh, and she was the founder of our MFA program here at American University. So today is dedicated to Myra. Lots of love to you all. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye, everyone.